So ReZero is getting awfully close to the end of the Sanctuary arc, the end of the Trials, the end of the Mansion storyline, and once again it feels like we're getting real close to a good ending, which really seems to be the only way to end Season 2, or at least end this arc, because how do you realistically go back to having Subaru have to remake all of these relationships, especially when it comes to Amelia? If Amelia hadn't developed as much as she did, I would still say there's a good chance we could loop. But at this point, while things don't have to go perfect, it does feel like we're getting awfully close. And I do appreciate how this show takes its time. I honestly thought when Amelia walked into her next trial, we would get trials two and three back to back. To no surprise, the next trial was kind of like that perfect future that can never be. What you dream of but can never happen. The same thing that happened with Subaru where he got to say his goodbyes to his parents because well he's never going to be able to do that as far as he knows and he was very appreciative to someone like Akidana for giving him that goodbye. And for Amelia, once again another very Subaru fashion, Subaru is definitely really rubbing off on her. Despite seeing, you know, best boy and best girl in this situation, getting a little picnic lunch, being together, no threats, no explosions, no horror, she still says thank you, but she knows she has somewhere else to be. I'm glad we got Trial 2 and just Trial 2 while having a decent chunk of the mansion storyline, so we can once again walk into next week, probably have something very similar, some action at the mansion, maybe finish up the next trial, or maybe it'll just be all mansion, and we we won't see the trial for a couple of weeks, but still, it doesn't feel like you're rushing to get anywhere. It doesn't feel like the reasons the episodes were extra length for so long because we needed to have extra dialogue in the previous scenes. No, even if the opening plays, even if the ending plays, or only if one plays, no matter what, we're going to take our time to get to every single plot point. And season two has been a roller coaster. I mean, you can look back to when Amelia first walked into, I think it was a church if I'm not mistaken, before she started taking the trials, and Subaru kind of like encouraged all the villagers to support Amelia, but she was very much brushed aside as they didn't trust her. If I'm not mistaken, the same old woman who compliments her and says we're going to stick by you in this episode is one of the biggest kind of like haters towards Amelia in season two in the first half. It's really interesting how the difference is so night and day and you really appreciate how long it took to get to a point like this where characters are supporting Amelia rather than saying she's a witch and she needs to be burned at the stake. There was a lot of suffering in the first half of season two. There was a lot of great like world building and kind of setup, but still it was kind of like the suffering arc and there was tons of suffering in season two part two as well or the second core of season two but still it feels like when you really think about the journey we've taken so far how it's not even finished yet but it already feels like it's such an impressive ride and the moments where we are ready to rip our hair out and say what's the point in continuing there's no way we're gonna get a good end but you know the author will give you a good end eventually and there's a reason for suffering it will cause characterization or development or it's gonna serve a bigger purpose than we can possibly imagine just the idea of her having literally nothing in the for most of season two by the looks of it if you really think about it from Subaru really not kind of waking her up and not giving her what she wants her feeling like her past is haunting her she really was kind of held down and now she kind of has the whole world by her side and it's really nice to see that development. The mansion stuff kind of functioned more or less how I assumed. The only main difference was there was obviously some curveballs. We have the one child kind of demon looking girl who pretended to be a normal girl and actually was a psychopath. Which I figured once Beatrice joined the crew that's kind of how they would deal with that. But then you have the mob beast, which they actually bring up the fact that they had a pretty good plan for those but not all of them were dealt with with said plan. There's definitely still hardships, but it's still going so well that you're not feeling the exact same way that we've approached the mansion up until this point. Someone like Garth is doing pretty well. Is he doing flawless? No, because that wouldn't be that interesting. Even if Garth wins, there still should be a struggle, and then there is. I mean, floors are crashing, there's a lot of uncertainty. But then you get to the more easy-to-kill characters, and while some maids are definitely going to be able to hold their own longer than others, you still have just regular people trying to survive and not knowing what they can do. And to see just giant creatures and demonic hell dogs pop up, it's pretty horrifying, I gotta admit. And to see Subaru, the way he was tackling the Beatrice storyline and how he's basically saying, like, he's kind of doing pretty much what he did to Amelia. He's insulting her, he's saying, you know, I'm done putting up with this shit. 
you want to go. There's no reason that you shouldn't have your rebellious phase yet. It's been 400 years. You really think this is the right book. And even if it is, you know, who cares at this point? There's no way you'd be trying to find a back door if you didn't want to cheat the system. And I really liked that whole conversation. The main difference was I had a sneaking suspicion that he might get thrown out the room. And the reason was, is that Amelia and Beatrice are very different characters. Amelia is someone who shut down initially. Beatrice, on the other hand, can have a very violent tendency. And the fact that when she's like, can you be this for me? And Subaru, not thinking things through, said the truth, but he didn't finish his sentence. So maybe he should have started with the good thing, said, I'm going to be this for you, but I can't be this. But instead, he just said, you know, I can't be this. And then he gets tossed the hell out of the room. That's the type of stuff you love to see in ReZero. The comedic relief scenes, they generally aren't my favorite things in serious or emotional moments. But a situation with Beatrice and Subaru, and that happens in the face of everything going on in the mansion, I can't say I didn't love it, because I absolutely did. And honestly, I'm really interested to see where next week's episode is going to go, because a part of me thinks that what they're going to do is pretty much what they did here. We're going to have more of the mansion fight, and then we're going to finish up the trial. But at the same time, I wouldn't be shocked if next week is just solely mansion content, and then the following episode is when we get that last trial and then it kind of links up to hopefully them coming back to Sanctuary or something to that degree. I mean, you only get a little glimpse of the whole Roswell fight and I mean, they're holding their own so it doesn't look hopeless. Honestly, it's weird to say, but like two weeks in a row, you're feeling rather good, or at least I know I am, about the characters and the situation that they're currently at. And this is one of those points in a show where it feels like there's going to be some people who will be watching the previous content of season two being like, is it worth it? Are we even going to get something? And all you can really say is that the suffering will matter. The suffering will cause characterizations. And you're really going to see those repeat timelines, those repeat loops in really different lights and seeing how easy it probably was to solve everything. But hindsight's 2020, And in the moment, it didn't feel like there was a good way to end everything. But now seeing how Subaru's navigated these relationships, it's really interesting seeing how they were able to do everything. I mean, voice actors once again on point, especially love Amelia and how she was pretty brave in her trial. And then Ekidana just crying and saying she's disgusting. That's a pretty interesting dynamic. And I mean, compared to how she was interacting with Subaru with that type of trial versus Amelia, I'm excited to see more and what she's going to say when she finishes her third trial, because you know what's going to happen. There's no way she doesn't pass it. Especially if the witch herself is saying, you know, there's no way you're not going to be passing these final two trials. Good luck. So overall, I mean, this, if you liked last week, you're probably going to be loving this week. It just is more of the same. And that's not a bad thing because last week really set up a formula that felt like it was going to be a good home stretch. And this is just taking it and making it even better, if I'm being honest. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. What did you think? And what did you think of Amelia's trial? Because I definitely thought that was a highlight for me, just seeing her be able to get something similar to that of Subaru. Getting that goodbye that may not be real, but to them is absolutely everything. Whatever you're feeling, let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.